Welcome to part two of stretching and canvas in a little over 10 minutes. Um, what we're going to be doing in this part two segment is actually doing the ears of the canvas. It's going to be a shorter version and I'm going to, you know, do these four ears and, um, and I'll show you which way to fold them and how to fold them and uh, I'll try to get the, the camera right on the edges so you get an idea of what you have to do to manipulate the canvas into the proper fold. Um, you know, everybody's going to have their own fold technique. It's going to just come out. Some people fold it really tight and bring it across. And, and you'll see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but um, you saw the first video on how to stretch it. Hopefully uh, you did that. And you gessoed it and you got the wrinkles out. And now it's time to fold the corners. Um, it doesn't matter. You can fold the corners and gesso it. But I, I, I tend to not want to fold the corners until I finish gessoing it and getting the wrinkles out because if you get it too tight anywhere near those corners of a, of a stretcher bar on the canvas you'll twist the frame and you'll see this you'll, you'll probably run into it several times as you do this and um, it takes a lot of time to realize that uh, I'm trying to help you with that but uh, if, if you just gesso it with the corners undone I mean you know you can actually do a full painting I do all my paintings without doing the corners until I'm done because I know the paint will actually tighten up the canvas also. So I, I give it that little bit of free stretching in the corners so it doesn't twist the frame and I have no problems and it works out great. So um, let's start, start off here. Get this position just right. You should have enough staples from the whole thing. If you don't, we'll reload. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna get this like this. We'll pull this in. And basically, fold the start watch. Folding this over like that. You see what I'm saying? Folding it over like that. But you gotta make sure you get all the wrinkles in it. And that takes a lot of practice. It takes moving the canvas. That's the corner you get. That's the corner you get. Right there. Can you see that? You can't see it. I'm bringing the camera to you. Here we go. That's the corner you get right there. That's the corner. Bring over the light to get a good idea of what the proper corners look like. That's what it looks like. Or you can gesso it before this, it will work the frame. Okay, 
Okay, so this is just pretend this is completed painting and this is the final, the final stretching of it, the final completed painting.
get the stapler out of there. It's obviously jammed up. Make sure you're pointing away from your face and you have the proper glasses. Driver to If it's broke, it's broke. There's nothing you can do about it. So. Well, my stapler is broke. <laughs> so, you got the, the, the main idea here. I'll have to And um, we'll be doing it in your own time. No time at all. You can always try to dump it out. This is another one. So dump it out, clean it out. Maybe some pieces got broken off in there. You can try to put it back in there. Just a, just a little bit. You just want to put a couple back in there. And then... Something you gotta learn to figure out yourself. Man, it does not work. But uh, eventually you get it done. With a little persistence. Shake it all out, get it all out of there. Because if you don't, you'll never get a stick. Try it once. If it continues to jam, then it looks like you're going to lose stuff. But I would continue to dump it out. Give it a few taps. Drop it back in there. Try it one last time. If your stapler breaks, then uh, go buy a new one. But uh, that's that's about what it's all about, about stapling the edges and the corners. And uh, I'll get back to you with a new video on how to <laughs> get a stapler that works. Thank you.